So it's the next morning. Today is Sunday the 6th of December. Oh, it's 2 o'clock already. We had a very exciting morning and this is why. We had our water heater break, our internet service go out, her phone broke, our Wi-Fi repeater broke. Within a week. Hi, I was wondering if you feel grumpy. Oh, 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 okay. They just have 20% left. This whole experience with tractor supply was absolutely amazing. 110 mile an hour winds according to the officials. The roof was obliterated. What is gumbo? We're always looking for water. Well, I don't think we'll be getting any diesel fuel here. Out of Louisiana, into Texas. Yay, super excited. We like Texas. So we are at a campground. We might go check out the Christmas parade or celebration, whatever it is over there. So yeah, we had a very, very busy morning. They have the Today Show and then they have the Today Show Sunday edition. And then they do this Today Show Spotlight, I believe. NBC's Kerry Sanders has our Sunday Spotlight. And back in September, through a friend of ours, we got in touch with Kerry Sanders and they were doing a piece. When the world went remote, some families took it quite literally, seeking remote corners in search of America the Beautiful. We were super nervous during that interview and we had no idea if they're gonna actually include this piece in their show. And this morning we watched it and and it was just very, very nice. We were not expecting this. They did a great job with it. Yeah, yeah we, we didn't know, you know, for the last four months we did the interview, we sent them a bunch of drone footage and they went through our YouTube channel and everything. And they actually included a lot of our stuff, so that was very nice. They had another family on there with, they were full time with their kids yeah. and uh, they got, you know, half of the time and then we got the other half. It was very exciting to see us on TV, I guess. Yeah. I think I'm we're probably- We're stars now. Yeah. We'll also leave a link in the description with a link to the video so you can watch it for yourself. It's only like three and a half minutes. Yeah. So right now we're near Houston and we unfortunately have to drive all the way up to Dallas tonight, which is about four hours because with Sasha's phone broken, we're having a really hard time working basically. Because of the Christmas rush, they're sold out virtually everywhere. The only place that had it available, at least in the Southern United States, aside from Atlanta, Georgia, was fortunately for us uh, up in Dallas. So they had a couple on hand. I, I put a hold on it and I'm gonna have to pick it up tomorrow morning. We're gonna pack up and start driving. Punched it in and it's four hours and 19 minutes, 313 miles away. Ah, crazy, a little farther than I wanna go. I have to make this face. Okay. Exactly. We just pulled over to make a quick pit stop on the side of the highway. We were hungry, had to pee. I checked the charging status of the alternator charging system. It wasn't charging. So we've just driven like two hours. I haven't gotten any charging out of it. I have it on right here, but it wasn't working. So I'm gonna pop the hood real quick and see what the problem might be. Yep, right there. I'm gonna replace those with fuses because the breakers keep tripping when it gets hot, like sitting in traffic or climbing a mountain or just on a hot day. Fuses won't trip, whereas those will because they're tripped by heat, not necessarily just by over amperage. So I'm gonna go back in there and check to make sure it's actually charging now. It works now. It helps when the breaker's on. Making sandwiches for my husband. Looks and smells good. Looks and smells good. Looks, Looks good, smells good. Looks and smells? That's a, it's like a brand name, Looks and Smells. I'm not sure if it's a good thing or bad. Susie, Susie. Working in shoe shine shop. All day long she sits and shines, all day long she shines and sits. She sits and shines and shines and sits. Yeah. Working in a shoe shine shop. Susie, Susie, working in a shoe shine shop. All day long she sits and shines. All day long she shines. She sits and shines and shines and sits. Sits and shines and shines and sits. Working in a shoe shine shop. All right, so somehow I missed last time that this was also tripped, and that controls our refrigerator, which was off. So we should be all powered back up now. 
on the road again. So we like to stop at Love's Travel Stops to get diesel exhaust fluid and use their really long window squeegees. I think she's trying to ride it. So we've been driving for four or five hours. It's 9.30, we've had a few stops. We still have an hour to go. So it looks like we're not gonna get there till almost nine. So it's been a long drive. It's actually nice to stop and wash a window and get some food and take a break from driving. Thank you. You're welcome. Hopefully it's a little bit cleaner. It's a truck, it's dirty, it's fine. All right, back to it. We're used to seeing a lot of big rigs, but this place just brings it to another level. There's like two or three rows of this. There's, I don't know, probably at least 100 trucks here. Well, we see Dallas in the distance now. We have 22 miles left to get to the Walmart that we're headed to. It's always beautiful to see the city at night. Very pretty. Look at that, even their cranes are lit up blue. So it looks like we are driving to Walmart. It's taken us almost all day. Two, two o'clock to 8.30. So normally for some reason, whenever we need to, to ask permission if we can stay someplace, I have a tendency to have a better luck. We just want a yes or no, because yeah. if they're like, no, policies have changed, you guys can't stay, then I don't want to be here because we're going to end up getting the, the two o'clock in the morning knock from yeah. the police. So we'd like to know if it's at least a viable option because we've found that almost all the Walmarts, Cracker Barrels, everything in this region don't allow it. Yeah. So she's going to go see Fingers crossed. what they say and then we can plan the rest of our night. Yeah. Well? Yeah, so so she she told me that we have to park on the opposite side. She said that if you guys are going to have barbecue, I'm in. <laughs> that was so funny. Go up Texas. It was super funny. But yeah, she, she said multiple times that you guys are on your own. You guys are on your own. Like if something happens, we're yeah. not responsible. Like I'm com like completely get it. We've done that a couple times. So a couple hundred. Yeah. So, so I did call the Cracker Barrel, which is 15 minutes away. Oh. And they said, yep, come on down. Cool. So we could also do that. Here's the thing. I think we agree on this. Yeah. We don't really like Walmarts because they are inconsistent and they're loud. And, and we always have like teenagers that show yeah. up in the parking lots and they rev their engines and things like that, which, hey, I used to do that too. But when I'm trying to sleep at two in the morning, it's a little frustrating. So we've learned that Walmarts aren't the greatest place, but yeah. Cracker Barrels have these, like usually three to four RV spots that are behind the building and it's- Which is perfect for us because we're small enough that we can fit in yeah. without a ton of RVs nearby because most of the RVs are bigger. So they can't really uh, fit. They prefer Walmarts. So, so we right exactly yeah, so, so the um and then of course at walmart's a lot of the time you have people that run their generators all night mm -hmm. you have um the big rigs that are just idling all night cracker barrel we tend to stay at more often we we generally don't really like staying at cracker barrels and walmart's but when we're near cities or when we're tra traveling if we have to then it's quick and easy yeah. just pull off the highway there it is in the reviews on rv park he also said that they gave them permission, but then the police came and told them to leave. It was actually a police car driving. I know, I just, I just saw the cop drive by and made me think of it. So what did he say? It's a very interesting thing. Yeah. So he said that police doesn't care, it has nothing to oh. do with them. Walmart property is private property. Yeah. The only time they have to come out oh. is if someone calls. Oh. oh. So it could be one of those things where like when RV people get called on, it's because one manager says yes and the next manager says no. Oh. But so he said it doesn't matter. So there's no like local ordinance that says absolutely no parking or anything like that. He's like, we don't care. He's like, if we get called, we have to come out. But if they gave you permission, then you're all set. I still don't know if I like Walmart. Let's go check out. Let's go check out this spot. This is so just so you guys know, this is except for when we find a really good boondock spot. This is the nightly challenge. 
finding where to stay. It's one of the most, what do you call it, like... Time-consuming activities, right? Time-consuming and uncertain aspects of doing this. Most of the time, we have no idea where we're going to stay and if we're going to have a good night's sleep. And we just drove, you know, five, six hours, and we don't know where we're going to stay. It's nine o'clock. So while it's cool to travel, this is the less glamorous side of it. They told us that we should park on this side, and there's very little parking, and it's also on the entrance exit side, which is very noisy. There's all of these other businesses around. So we're gonna chicken out and go to Cracker Barrel because we've had way, way better luck with Cracker Barrel. So that's our next destination. Yeah, this actually looks like a good nice spot. Yeah. We just arrived at the Cracker Barrel and it's so much quieter now. Much more open and quiet. Yeah. So we're but tired. We're starved. It's nine o'clock. See you tomorrow. Bye. All right, good morning. Morning. So we uh, we slept pretty well last night. It was relatively quiet. We had a pickup truck or someone backing up at like 4 a.m. that woke me up. It was like right next to us. It was the garbage truck. There's the okay. dumpsters over there. Monday is dumpster day. Yeah. Everywhere we go, every place we stay, there's dumpsters being picked up every Monday morning, especially from restaurants. So I called the dealerships this morning and they sent me directly to the voicemail. And of course, it's Monday morning, they're busy. We're about 15 minutes away from one of the dealerships that services the Alda heating system. And then we have an appointment at Apple to pick up the phone at, what, like 11.30. Yeah. So it's what, nine o'clock, eight o'clock? It's 8.30 right now. So we've decided that we're gonna just simply drive the 12 or 13 minutes to the dealership, walk into the service department and say, here's our situation. We live in our camper. Help us out, please. We don't have any water. Can yeah. you guys like squeeze us in? All right, so that was a quick, uh, like, 14-minute drive. We're here, and we're going to run inside and see what we can find out. Uh, I'm actually not feeling super hopeful. Uh, Josh is here at the stand. I was wondering if there's any coffee, but I wasn't sure. Oh, yeah, um, it's the little crash right there. Oh, you're stealing coffee. I cannot find any covers. <laughs> this particular place, they are an Aldi dealer, but they only sell the product. They're not an authorized service center. We're going to call Aldi next and... See if we can even get a hold of them. My name is Scott Gregson. What did they say? So that was, I guess, a little surprising. So I called the number and it said press one for service, and it went like, Bring. "Hi, this is John Huck." And I was like, "Oh wow, <laughs> you're not expecting that." No, just the fact wow. that I, I called someone <laughs> and, they and they picked up, up and he was like, "Yeah, we just have to swap the unit." It was good news. I was I was surprised that he he picked up and talked to me on a Monday morning at what nine o'clock. So normally everyone's slammed at that time. Yeah. While we're waiting for a call back from Alda. We're gonna just drive over to the mall where the Apple store is. We have an appointment there at I think 11 o'clock. All right, thank you. Bye-bye. So that was the second place I called and they are also not a servicing dealer. They only do sales. I'm still waiting for Alda to call back and tell me where to go, what to do. It's only been like a half an hour, so I'm not really in a huge rush. We're gonna go make some breakfast and we still have our uh, Apple appointment to go pick up a phone. Got my phone, which is great, but I've spent the last three hours backing up my old phone so I can transfer it. While we've been working here today, Truck Camper Magazine reached out to us. They apparently saw the piece that NBC did on us, and they've asked us to answer some questions so that they can do an article about us, which is super exciting. So we're gonna just keep hanging out here at the mall and working on stuff. You can see we're tapping away. I'm trying to get my phone transferred over so we can get Sasha's phone fixed. and. But we may end up having to go to like a, I don't know, an Applebee's or a Starbucks and borrow some Wi-Fi because ours is still offline. And as for the hot water heater, we did get some call back and they're still trying to find where we can go. 
I talked to Creed over at New Camp, who's a great guy. He's been helping us for the last year, and he's a really helpful person to know. He had some additional contacts over at the Truma Alda company, and he sent those over to me. So if I don't hear anything soon, I'm going to start calling the other people he suggested. So I'm hoping to get some progress with that today. It's already 2.30, so they're going to be closing up soon, which means we have no idea which direction to go right now. Do we drive south? Do we go to Austin? Do we go to Louisiana? We have no idea. So we're gonna hang out in Dallas, work on this until we know which direction to drive. <laughs> kind of a weird feeling not having any routes. No idea where to go. We just float around. But it's kind of fun too. All right, update later. Last night we didn't get anywhere in terms of the hot water system. The, all of the places around are saying they're booking out into March. That's not gonna help us. And then a lot of them basically said, if you didn't buy your RV with us, we're not gonna service it due to COVID, which is, what? Like, doesn't Total make BS. sense. How does COVID interfere with... Probably? I think just that's just an easy way of saying no. So then I emailed some other places and talked to some people and they basically said, here's our deal, it's under warranty, would you be willing to do the work? And they just said no. So back and forth with Alda, who's actually been super, super helpful. They're going to be giving me a call back either later today or first thing in the morning. See if they can find me like a local mobile RV mechanic, something like that, that they'll work with. Because right now I'm trying to find authorized service centers to do this. There was one that was suggested out in Arizona and they said that they could probably do it, but that would be in March. There's one in Arkansas that said they can do it in probably two weeks. You know, we have plans, we have timetables to keep. So it's, it's actually getting rather frustrating. We're doing fine with the, basically we're taking cold showers and then rinsing off with warm water. Yeah, it's not bad. Which isn't bad. And it's saving us a ton of water. We're using and way wash, less water. And I wash my hair in the sink, which I used to do that anyway. So it's, it's kind of fine. And luckily she only washes her hair, what, every other day? Yeah. So she has really thick hair. It's, like, <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> we're doing fine with that. I mean, it's, we live in a camper. Our expectations aren't too high. We don't know where to go right now. Do we drive towards Arkansas or do we start driving towards Austin or do we go to Arizona? No one has an answer and there really is no answer at this point. You know, we also have other work to do, like making videos. It's not really an emergency, but we want to get it fixed as soon as possible. Our plan was to go to Glen Rose and hang out for a while, but right now it's, it's up in the air because we may not be able to do that if we have to go to Arkansas. So if they don't give me a resolution on this soon, I'm going to ask if I can just do it myself. It's basically a whole unit swap, but we're, we're not there yet. I'm still trying to find someone to do it, especially under warranty. Problem has become a little bit more complicated. I thought we'd be able to call up a dealer. We go in, they would fix it. You know, I may have to wait a week. And at this point, it's nothing. We found some free water about an hour south, but we need to go north. So today I'm going to get water at Walmart, which we do very, very infrequently. It's broken. Hi, simple question. Uh, you guys have that water filling station in the water aisle? We do. It's broken, or is it just off? Yes. It's off. Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> it's off due to COVID. Good morning. We heard back from Alda yesterday, and they don't really have anyone in the relatively close region that can do it. So I'm waiting to hear back from a like one of the supervisors if they can authorize a non-Alda certified RV repair place to do the job. It's Pretty simple. It's basically pull the old boiler out, put a new boiler in, and connect the propane line and refill it with the glycol. It's nine o'clock now, and if they don't call me in the next hour or so, I'm gonna call them. We're having a hard time getting any work done because we're constantly moving around. We don't know where to go. We tried to get the water yesterday and that didn't work out, but we did get grocery shopping done, which was great. So we stopped at a Cracker Barrel because the nearest like real boondock spot is like an hour and a half away. We just, we ran out of time. It was like dark and 6 p.m. So what we've decided to do is because all of the RV service centers are in the city, we're hoping that we can find someone. We're gonna go stay at a Texas State Park and use our Texas State Park Pass, which you stay one night, you get the second night 50% off. So it gives us basically a 25% discount for a couple days. State parks are pretty useful for us, um, Cracker Barrels. There are some forests that we can go stay in, but they're just not close to us. And we don't want to start driving anywhere because we may end up going to Arkansas. We might have to go to Arizona. We might have to go to Southern Texas. We might have to go back to Louisiana. We don't know. So I don't want to drive, you know, four or five hours one direction and then find out I have to drive back that direction. So we're going to just stay put until we have an answer to all of this. Hi, Chris. This is Scott Gregson returning your call. 
I was calling to see if you had had a chance to talk to Chantel. If you could give me a call back, I would appreciate it. Thank you. So since we got to Texas, we've been kind of lurking in the cities because we've been using the resources there. And now that we're going towards a state park, this particular one is like Ray Roberts State Park or Dubois State Park. So we figured it out. It's Ray Roberts Lake State Park, Isle Dubois unit. So it's, I think there's several state parks around this lake and they're each broken into units. It's actually nice to be back to like a state park or nature. <laughs> So this is our our little home sweet home for the next four days. Hopefully we can get some work done and maybe relax a little bit. Gotta go make phone calls, write an article, make a video. That's all. That's all. That's today. Yeah. Tomorrow we have other things to do. What a pain! When we showed up at, at our campsite, we we tried to, you know, set up our laptops and work, and we realized that we have no cell service and no internet whatsoever nothing so we ended up having to drive back to the uh the visitor center like the entrance to the campground yeah. and we have great service here but not at our campsite so that's uh something to consider uh, that's something that's going to make a major pain for us but that also means that for the next four days we're here it's not going to be very comfortable so we might have to stay here for a couple days and then find another place to go my name is scott and i have a question about getting a repair done broken water heater my number is 603. All right, thank you. Hi, can I speak to someone in service, please? Thank you. We are currently in Texas and we're calling around trying to find a shop that's willing to do the repair. Thank you. should have it solved. We don't have any idea. Hopefully. Yeah, we don't have any idea on time frame yet, um, but we worked with Aldi. I talked to some people there. They were actually very helpful. And then they said, we just want to get you taken care of. So after calling virtually every RV dealership within about four hours of us, they all basically said no. We had one of our Instagram followers suggest a local mobile RV repair shop. And we called them up and they said, sure, we've never really done it before, but we have the time to do it. I called Alda and got authorization to use a non-Alda certified repair shop. I thought this was gonna be a video about, we have a broken water heater, we're gonna call up, we're gonna find the RV service center to fix it, and we would schedule it, wait for the parts, and we'd be done. It's actually turned into a, a lot more complicated than I had expected. So the sun is actually setting right now. It's extremely beautiful and we would like to share with you guys. I will finish off this video with a sunset. Thank you for watching. Yeah, and if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and click subscribe. It really, really helps us.